Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our five minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about acute otitis media, otitis media with effusion, chronic suppurative otitis media, mastoiditis, and otitis externa. Today, we'll talk about another disease of the middle ear known as cholesteatoma. It's the biggest misnomer, if there was any. Why? Because it ends in oma, yet it's not a neoplasm. It says cholesterol in the name, but it does not have to have cholesterol. Some of them do, some of them don't. And if I have a mass in my middle ear, do you think I'll get conductive hearing loss or sensory neural hearing loss? Conductive hearing loss. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Quick review of the anatomy of the ear. Your ear has three parts, external ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The external ear is made of the auricle or the ear penna, then we have the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. Some hypotheses suggest that the reason why cholesteatoma develop in the middle ear is due to a perforation in the tympanic membrane and spread of gunk from the external ear into the middle ear. Cholesteatoma is a cystic mass in the middle ear. And as you know, the middle ear contains the famous three bony ossicles, malus, incus, stapes, and then Stapes has its foot on the window. Really? Which window? Oval window. Think of your cousin putting his foot on the window. That's the Stapes right there. Please do not confuse cholesteatoma with autosclerosis. Cholesteatoma is an oma, it's a mass, in the middle ear, cystic mass that is. But autosclerosis, sclerosis, bone deposition, stiffening, of the foot process of the stapes and the oval window. Since both cholesteatoma, which is today's topic, and otosclerosis, which is the next video's topic, are diseases of the middle ear, therefore both of them can lead to conductive hearing loss. Because remember, if I have a problem in the external ear or the middle ear, it gives me conductive hearing loss. But if the problem is in the inner ear, I will develop sensory neural hearing loss because that is a sensory nerve right there. We talked about otitis externa before. It's caused by foreign bodies or trauma to the ear or swimming, water exposure. Hope you like your earbuds. What kind of hearing loss can happen? Conductive hearing loss. And it's a problem in the external ear. But today's topic is a problem in the middle ear. If you wish to download these doozy colorful notes, go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you want me to personally tutor you, reach out to me on my website. And since cholesteatoma is a problem in the middle ear, could it be associated with uh, otitis media, which is inflammation and infection of the middle ear? Yeah. Middle ear infection is kind of dangerous because it can pass this way. It can spread this way to the mastoid antrum, mastoid air cells causing mastoiditis. And behind it, what's that? Sigmoid venous sinus thrombosis or syndrome. The infection can spread upwards and before you know it, it's in the brain, especially if you're a very young child because this has not ossified yet. Meningitis, encephalitis, cerebritis or cerebral abscess. So one of the complications of repeated attacks of acute otitis media is cholesteatoma. For the last time, cholesteatoma is a disease in the middle ear. Cholesteatoma, misnomer, why? It's not a neoplasm even though it ends in oma. It's not made of cholesterol. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes we have cholesterol debris, sometimes we do not. What is true is that cholesteatoma is a cystic mass in the middle ear, measuring one, two, four centimeters in diameter, associated with chronic otitis media or repeated attacks of acute otitis media in the middle ear. I hope by now you can understand why. If I have cleft palate, I have a higher risk of middle ear diseases, including cholesteatoma. Because if the cleft palate is there, it means there is a free communication between my mouth and my nose, which means gunk from my mouth can reach my nose, reach my nasopharynx, a station tube or auditory tube, and before we know it, we have gunk in the middle ear. So, can a patient with Patau syndrome, which is trisomy number 13, develop cholesteatoma? Yes, because Patau syndrome patients have cleft lip and palate. So, cholesteatoma can happen to patients with cleft 
palate. What is cholesteatoma? It's a mass of keratin. It is cystic and it's located in the middle ear. Why did it happen? No one knows. There are some hypotheses. Some will argue there is growth of squamous epithelium from the external ear through a perforated eardrum pew, pushing itself to the middle ear. Others will say there is squamous metaplasia of the middle ear epithelium because normally the middle ear has low cuboidal epithelium. When the cuboidal changes into squamous, we call it squamous metaplasia. That's why we end up with keratin in the middle ear. That's another hypothesis. Others will argue that it's actually caused by the otitis media. No one knows for sure. Associations are not causes. Correlations are not causations. What we do know is that cholesteatoma is a cystic mass, one to four centimeters in the middle ear that can lead to conductive hearing loss. What's ugly about cholesteatoma is that it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and can erode into bones. Before you know it, it's destroying your bones, causing hearing loss. In the beginning, it's conductive, but it keeps eroding into into your labyrinth, which is your inner ear, it can end up with sensory neural hearing loss. Your facial nerve is just by the stylomastoid foramen, facial paralysis. Epsilatral Bell's palsy, brain abscess, visible neck mass. Wow, it's getting so big. Squamous cells, keratin. That's why it appears cystic white lesion with creamy or waxy granular material. Under the microscope, you will see keratinized squamous epithelium or metaplastic mucus secreting epithelium. Granulation tissue, check. Giant cells, check. On physical exam, pearly white mass. In the external ear? No, in the middle ear, behind the tympanic membrane. And it's usually behind the anterosuperior quadrant of the eardrum. We see retraction pockets in the eardrum, that's why it's called retraction pocket cholesteatoma, and we'll see some gunk. Diagnosis is made clinically, the most accurate test is a biopsy, which is usually not performed before surgery. Management is surgery, get that sucker out. Here is the normal tympanic membrane or eardrum. If I have cholesteatoma, you will see some hazy mass at the anterosuperior aspect of the eardrum, behind the eardrum, in the middle ear. That's a cholesteatoma. In the next video, we'll talk about autosclerosis. If you want to learn more about neck masses, squamous cell carcinoma of the mucosa of the head and neck, epistaxis, benign positional paroxysmal vertigo, and other conditions, then download my surgery high yields course. It will even teach you about trauma surgery and orthopedic surgery at medicosisperfectionalis.com. So cholesteatoma is usually a cholesterol cyst in my middle ear. But what if I have a chocolate cyst in my ovary? What's that? Download my OBGYN high yields course to learn more. It will also tell you about ruptured ovarian cyst, twin twin transfusion syndrome, low implantation of the ureter, etc. Help me make more videos like this one by supporting my channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos on this channel available to you when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal, or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes, and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine, chemistry, math, and physics make perfect sense.